Welcome everyone to the Our Two Cents podcast. My name is Admir, joined today by the one and only Osama. Hello, sir. Hello to you, sir. Thank you so much for having me. Appreciate it. Yeah, I'm having you. I'm always having you. I'm just having. <laughs> just you. have me more, man. Have me more. <laughs> the having podcast. We appreciate everybody, of course, for listening to the Our Two Cents pod. Uh, just some housekeeping before we get into the review today for episode five of the Rings of Power TV show. Uh, what was the name of it? I've wrote it about 18 times and now it's escaped me. The name of the episode? Partings. Partings. Uh, that's what it's called. Partings. Episode five. Uh, just some housekeeping things. Uh, top of the line, of course, if you're listening to this on a podcast somewhere on Spotify, Apple Podcasts, or Stitcher, we appreciate the reviews. Helps the podcast get out there. If you're watching this on YouTube at the R2 Cents Pod channel, give us a sub. Uh, you know, If you appreciate the content, of course, give us a like. And let us know what you thought about the episode in the in the comments uh, below. And we do have a special shout out today. We do indeed. One of our uh, one of our super fans has had a birthday recently. Some might so. say the OG super fan, the original, really yeah. the original audience member, the original viewer, the original commenter, the original gangster <laughs> himself. That's right. That's right. So Fadal recently turned twenty. Uh, happy birthday, brother! Hopefully you enjoyed it. Hopefully the upcoming year for you is, is happy just birthday with... to you. I'll do sexy. Happy, one. Let's do sexy bir- one. <laughs> happy birthday <laughs> to you. Ah, it's great. It's happy so good. birthday, mm. Mr. King Fuddle. Happy birthday to you. <laughs> <laughs> this is why I'll need to follow and comment on videos, man. We get birthday shout outs to the I, I don't really get flamed in the comments for for that right now, for that embarrassing. It's gonna be rendition. an offering. It's gonna be an offering in the Patreon one day. Uh, <laughs> but uh yeah, no, happy birthday, Fadal. Obviously, hopefully you enjoyed it. And and best wishes to you, man. Hey, we were twenty once a while ago now. So enjoy it. <laughs> While Oof. it lasts. No, honestly, hearing that he turned 20 was a, a bit of a madness this morning. It is so. a little bit. But with that, we'll move on to more, uh, less, I guess, harder things for us. Uh, talk about the Rings of Power here, episode five. We're going to break it down into what we liked, what we didn't like, and what we're looking forward to slash excited for. Mm-hmm. Uh, there's no summary available because the episode just dropped, unfortunately. So I'm hoping everybody who's listening to this watched it already. Uh, but with that... Osama, let's get into this. A lot of stuff happened in this episode. I think it was one of the longer ones. Uh, yes. Clocked in over an hour and five for me, something like, a, like that. Yeah, so, like an hour 12 total with credits. So Yeah, it's, quite, it's on the longer side in terms of the episode. So in terms of what you liked, I want to go to you because uh, in the in the group, I think there's a little split here. You're a little yeah. bit more of a fan of the Rings of Power TV show than the House of the Dragon. And it's all right to be wrong, but can you explain why you're wrong? <laughs> And why you appreciated uh, this? I, I can't explain why I'm wrong because I'm not, but I do firmly stand by my belief that we're seeing yeah. a lot more out of the Rings of Power than we're seeing from House of the Dragon. I think House okay. of the Dragon leans very much on the basis of Game of Thrones and why there's like there's been a lot of excitement, obviously, waiting a few years to, to get a new show. And I think a lot of people's excitement for this show is residual from that. Whereas this show is is building it based off of nothing, like like the last Lord of the Rings piece of content um, from the original trilogy will have been what like two thousand three now, so right. it's it's been nineteen years since that, and so no one was really uh, I don't think anyone from our immediate circle was uh, super super ecstatic for the show, but having watched it now five episodes in, I'm really excited for the direction that it's going in. Um, we mm-hmm. talked a little bit last week. If you, if anybody didn't check out our previous episodes last week, we I I did it with Fahad. The week before that, I think maybe Admir, you you and Fahad did yeah. it. Um, and so last week we talked a little bit about some of the things that um, excited us also, but some of the things that we were a little bit let down by. And on that front, um, I think a lot of this episode coming just fresh off of it, a lot of those uh, things that I was worried about were a little bit rectified. There were I'll just start with the things that I'm was already excited about and I'm continuing to be excited about, which is this notion, this overall theme of um, racism and classism and this idea that, you know, between humans, elves, um, 
uh, dwarves. We haven't seen wizards yet unless the uh, mysterious man with the Harfoots is a wizard, but with the Harfoots as well. There are all these different people and this idea that people operate based on their own principles, based on their own philosophies, depending on where they came from. And I'm really interested to unpack a little bit more. I think with each episode that passes, we get a little bit more of the nuance between each of these different, uh, I guess, classes of, of, of creatures of people in um, in the lore. And I'm especially excited to see one. I think the, the, the most one of the most interesting dynamics is between um, Elrond and Durin. I think we bookended yep. the episode with with that uh, story arc. But I last week I was super excited to figure out whether um, Elrond had ulterior negative motives behind um, his desire to rekindle with Durin. And we find out in this episode that it's all because um, he was kind of duped a little bit. He, he did go in with some sus intentions in the first place, but it wasn't as sus as the, the king um, uh, held away from him. And so we, we end up learning that potentially he might be needing uh, Durin to save his kind. Again, I'm kind of feeling a little bit uh, in the dark on whether what the king said is true or not. I'm not necessarily sure. I'm not necessarily convinced that they need uh, the mithril or whatever it's called to save their save all of the elves. It seems like a very convenient story to get something that's super valuable, I'd imagine. Um, right. On the flip side, you get to see the relationship between elves and humans. Um where uh, Arendir and Bronwyn are trying to galvanize a group of humans to fight back against uh, Adar and the orcs. And then uh, we have the Harfoots and this mysterious man who Fahad and I predicted last week might be a wizard, potentially. Who knows? Maybe he is Gandalf. I don't know. But um, he has this kind of innate good and evil sides to him. And it's really interesting to right. tease that out a little bit with the Harfoots who they go about their lives as passive as possible as like down the middle as possible and so are now forced to make a decision on this um kind of intruder who might actually be able to support them in a kind of way so for me the thing i'm most excited about in this show is just to tease out more of the um different classes of creatures and how they interact with each other whether they want to partner with each other or whether there's going to be um evil beyond just what we've criticized in the original trilogy which is Sauron's evil, just this evil for the sake of pure evil. And I think the more interesting dynamic is the greed um, that uh, people portray in just their day to day life. Like we see it with Farazan in um, Numenor, who's like, he's the second hand to the queen. And he's very much one of those conniving characters that you'll see in a Game of Thrones type of show, um, who knows all the right things to do to gain power. And he has a really cool uh, monologue with his son where he speaks about not wanting to stop this war, not wanting to at all like get in the way of the queen because if they do end up um, kind of supporting Middle Earth and helping those people out, then they'll pretty much be indebted to them forever. And he wants to be the guy to oversee a nation while um, they have another nation just completely indebted to them. So we're seeing these kind of like little sprouts of evil um, come about naturally, organically, the way you might normally see it in any kind of drama. So I'm, I'm just excited to, to tease all of those inner dynamics and themes out. Uh, what's another thing for you, Admir, that you're most excited about? Yeah, you. I think you hit the nail on the head there. Um, up to up to this point, I think the standout features of the show were definitely the production and the design of it, and mm -hmm. uh, the score by Bear McCreary. I think has been really really good and they've done really well at the world building aspect of it mm -hmm. um th those components of a tv show i think can't last you too long uh they're really good i think for bringing viewers in but you have to give a little bit more to keep people right. intact um i agree with you i think the show's decision to go this route of moral questioning of characters is going to be key uh, I think that's sort of why you can get away, I think, in a film or even a trilogy like the original Lord of the Rings where you have more of a straightforward sort of baddie, bad guy. Baddie. Mm -hmm. yeah. Nice. <laughs> Not that type. Uh, <laughs> and it's three movies, so it's easier to accept, I think. Whereas right. in a TV show, you have to layer in things. And yeah, I agree. I think there's several moments here where you have characters have to make this is where i'll 
I'm a little bit 50-50, where it's presented like a difficult decision. And I want to use those words very specifically, that it's presented like it's a hard decision for characters to make. So I like the intention of the show to do that because you learn about characters and what they, I think what they, you know, who they are through their decision making as opposed to more things influencing them and them having to, you know, just go down that route. I mm-hmm. think up until episode five, that was happening a lot. Um, I think there were very few characters that were moving within their own space. Um, and so now I think they're done introducing characters. Um, so it's, it's more about, okay, so everybody's introduced now. How do you then create the drama between them? And so, yeah, I, I think that is definitely the strong suit of this episode so far is the, you know, Elrond, does he break an oath? Does he save his people? Uh, Mm -hmm. Bronwyn, does she stay with her people and fight or does she submit to the orc leader? Uh, you know, Nori, does she stay with a stranger? Does she exclude him from the group? Like everybody has Mm -hmm. these choices that they have to make. So on the surface, and I think the way it reads to me, yeah, I think that that sort of drama is what I appreciate and what I enjoy. Um, it's what pulls me towards something like a house of the dragons or or the original game of thrones um i'm gonna pivot now since i do have my segue (laughs) here into what i didn't like i think i know where you're going with this yeah though these questions are asked and though they're interesting questions so far at least they're weirdly i don't want to say inconsequential because things happen because of decisions but like i wanted the the elron one for example Mm -hmm. So he's presented with this, like, your species is going to die or you break an oath. And he makes this big deal about the fact that he made an oath. The solution seems to be, I'm going to just tell Durin. And Durin is not a scumbag who's just going to let elves just evaporate from the planet. Why would he not help them is the question, right? And maybe that drama piece comes later down the line. But it's sort of... The mm-hmm. substance of that moment is lost a little bit when it's so solved so quickly in a way. Similarly with like, um, I'm thinking of the Bronwyn example, uh, that sort of angle. Um, she sort of weirdly rises to like power relatively quickly. I, I'm guessing there's some sort of uh, respect for her that she fights off an orc and she you know brings yeah. a head a couple episodes ago. She's weirdly the leader of like the humans um, after she was kind of obviously despised in the earlier episodes for having a relationship with an elf. Um, she also flip flops way too quickly in the episode mm-hmm. of like, we're going to stay and fight. And then it's, well, oh, never mind. We're going to, we're going to just give up. Felt really then, weird at the end. Aaron Deer has to like keep convincing her and stuff. And th- there's some really just, the, 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 some of the writing is weirdly odd. Um, you have moments where she like, gets him and like, well, what, what, what other solution do you have? And he's just like blankly staring at her. I'm like, dog, say something. Like, can you say something? Like, I don't. <laughs> but also she I... just stood like literally, yes. presumably an hour ago, just stood in front of all her people and was right. like, we're going to take a stance here. And then within like the same day, she's questioning everything. And it's like, it doesn't feel like it's the, 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 the payoff is there to your point. And I agree with you. Yeah. The, the point about, um, Elrond and Durin, I feel like they spent more time dissecting the issue with this than actually solving it, which makes right. it feel like there's no payoff. Because now you're building this tension over three episodes now of whether right. Elrond like has these. And that, that was one of the things I was most excited about last episode of, yeah. I, I really wonder if they're going to tease out for the whole season, whether Elrond is trying to abuse Durin's relationship and, and, and mm-hmm. the dwarves. And then, like, to your point, it was solved within, like, five minutes. Like, Durin, and and, t- and also to your point, yes, Durin is a nice guy, and he doesn't want people to die, which is what makes me feel like there's going to be, there's gonna, this is going to lead to problems down yeah. the road more. But right. I felt like the, the this just, just felt a little bit cheap, them sitting on a rock and being like, well, uh, I broke my oath to you. And then he turns around, hmm. Just looks at him like that, and then goes, "Okay." And then they like, like have like that, like a great relationship, like moving forward. Yeah. And another one that I, I would point out to to your point yeah. there is, um, Isildur and his his dad, uh, Elendil. I think the like we have multiple episodes now of Isildur just being 
like an idiot, right? And yeah. not showing spoiled. his, yeah, mm-hmm. just being spoiled, like asking his dad to bring him back into for the expedition when he's shown nothing but sabotaging his crew members in the past. And conveniently, he ends up on a boat with the, uh, with Farzan's his son, I forgot his name. And, yeah. <laughs> and, and, and he's like lighting the boat on fire. And, Isildur carries him back oh, yeah. and like yep. that that um wins him favor with his dad like just conveniently before they voyage out and I mentioned this last week the one thing one of the biggest things that annoyed us was that um the Queen Muriel and Galadriel went back and forth all episode on whether they should leave or not when we're all watching this going we know you're gonna leave together like there's no like we know this is not gonna end with you going oh Numenor's fine like leave and not doing right. anything about it. Like, we know for the story to progress, you're probably going to team up. And my issue with it was that they teased at the whole episode, and they literally went back and forth. No, yes, no, yes, no, yes. Tree starts uh, dropping leaves. Okay, fine, yes. And then they um, move forward that way. I feel, it felt like the same thing happened again this episode, to your point, with it did. all those different arcs. And and the, the issue there becomes is then you look at those, the choices that these characters are meant to make, and... Uh, they're, they're like fake choices. It's mm-hmm. it's sort of like when you have those... Playing a video game? Those, <laughs> yeah. yeah, well, you know, it's it's like you, you watch superhero movies and it's like, does the hero choose his own life or like the safety of the city? You're like, yeah, right, right. You choose the city. I, I like, think I you choose, yeah, yeah. It's not well, a like real choice. Well, if you're playing choice. a video game and it's like, hey, uh, option A is to answer with this, option B is to answer with this. But yeah. it's, like a, a, it's like a forced like answer no matter what. It's like <laughs> right. you, you, no matter what answer you choose, it might feel like you're, cha- you're, you're changing the, the direction of this video game. But no, there was a tree already built, a decision tree already built for where you're going to progress. So. And, that's, and that's what like, so that for me is, um, you nailed it right there. That for me is why I feel this show is still too surface level for me man like mm. in addition to these these choices being lacking and and not having like weight the the scope of this episode is outlandishly huge yeah. i took notes on like whole show. what yeah. is happening bro there there's so many triangles and duets of people going off on their own thing and the ping ponging around of it really does not allow you to sort of like appreciate or just stay with a certain group for long enough like you have weird frivolous shit like galadriel just training with people and then immediately after orcs are about to like attack the tower and like tonally that's a bit of a weird conflict and then you're bouncing in and out with the whore foot so it's a, a that was the other thing with the episode i thought was way too much like i i wrote it down you you have in numenor you have galadriel you have halbrand you have muriel and then you have Frozen, I think is his name. So you have that group. Then you have Isildur and Elendil and his buddies. That's all happening in Numenor. In Metal Earth, you have Elrond, Durin, Gil, uh, Gilgalad, and um, the Ringmaker. All of that mm-hmm. shit's happening. In the Southlands, you have Bronwyn, you have Theo, you have Arondir. You also have like a thing with uh, Adar and like that group of people now. Mm-hmm. And then you have the Horfurt's journey with Nori and the Stranger. And I, none of these people yeah. are connected. Like, we're not yet on the show where, like, their paths have crossed so you can catch up with it in one mm-hmm. go. You literally need to go to, like, the four corners of the map, essentially, to get up to speed with everything that's happening. I want to compare it to House of the Dragon only in this respect. The the recent episode we had was a really good episode because you saw the paths cross mm-hmm. for a lot of the characters. Now, I'm not going to sit here and go... You need to do that this early on in the season. I don't think so. Yeah, but I do yeah. think that makes things difficult to keep up with and substantial with each group if none of them are like intermingling with each other. Yes, there's intermingling amongst themselves, mm-hmm. but they're way too far apart still. And I there's only three episodes left for the first season, I think, right? There's only eight episodes in the season. So this was episode okay. five. Mm-hmm. So we have six, seven, eight, I believe. That's a lot. For I, yeah. a lot of loose ends, kind of. It's it's really interesting that like you feel that way, and and it's honestly a really really fair point. I to your to your first point about the scope of this entire episode yeah. and and the show altogether in general. That's also one of the issues that Fahad had last week, which is that you're jumping back and forth 
you go from like a really serious piece of action to something silly and fun and lighthearted, like like in this episode, Galadriel fighting with the cadets and trying to like figure out like who's gonna yeah. become uh, promoted to lieutenant. I think with the scope, that's the stuff that I I personally love is like okay. throw me in the deep end of a whole new world, and the way you you build it out is by giving me glimpses into each of the different arcs that operate very differently. But the way to me that they're conjoined is not like a house of the dragon style yet where you have the characters actually introduced to each other, but instead they're joined by themes. There's obviously like the top level right. theme of we all want to fight evil. Understand like that's, that's like a given, right? But then there's like these sub themes like we talked about when it comes to, you know, racial dynamics when it comes to family dynamics when it comes to power dynamics in certain instances Mm -hmm. so these are like themes that they're running across the board to show that you know there's bigger things happening beyond just this uh desire to be free and this desire to fight back against evil my interpretation of all this is that they're probably going to have a culmination style episode as the finale similar to episode five of house of the dragon where you had like really this unfoiling and i think the reason it works for house of the dragon is because you're zeroed in on this one family the whole season right whereas in and 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 you're really building the characters as opposed to building the world and i think with um rings of power you're building the world and as as a as a facet of that you need to expand as wide horizontally as possible before having the world crash in and on itself in a whatever kind of culmination. I imagine episode eight will be some like the actual like first battle between the orcs and everybody else tag teaming together. The only I, th- I think the only I guess story arc that feels the most disparate is to me right now is um uh the the harfoots and um the mysterious man but then you can see the link there is like this man is probably a wizard based on what we just saw in this episode where he like slapped the earth and the wargs like just kind of flew back similarly you have elrond and durin kind of like completely unrelated to the wars and everything that's happening right now so but i imagine there it's like this is just about the future of the elves so there's like very minor links between uh the even the exterior stories but to me it's like I'm excited to be thrown in the deep end and jump from one scene to the next. And I think in all of the OG, most of the OG kind of adventure style movies or shows, they do have that ebb and flow of really throwing you into like some war, like very serious Mm -hmm, action mm -hmm, mm -hmm. back to something very silly. Like I even harken back even recently to like attack on Titan. You get a lot of that. It's like attack on Titan is one of the most serious topics possible in an anime, um, any kind of show. But then they'll like give you these moments of pleasure in between to keep you going because like we talked about with um Brahmastra, right? Like you can't have high, 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 like yeah. consistently giving me top level action, top level seriousness and drama and intensity where I'm just exhausted. You also can't give me too much lows, which is kind of my g- biggest gripe with, ha- with House of the Dragon is that like there's too much quiet. It's like this, they lean too much on this idea of eerie, um like eerie schemery that happens in the in the background and it's like the same kind of formula and i don't want to get too much into the house of the dragon but if it, for me it just feels like they lean too much on a reality tv show style of drama which for me is like it's totally fine and that has a place in society it's, it's a reason why it's one of the most popular genres in general and i think when you um decorate it in a um time period that's similar to game of thrones or house of the dragon it becomes just infinitely more appealing and that's totally fine i think it's like for me at this moment in time in my life i'm just more interested in the world building side of things sure, um, sure, sure. especially if you're gonna especially if, if if you don't lean as much into the character building as i would have loved from house of the dragon again i'm not down on house of the dragon at all i just feel like um there are a lot of like shortcuts that were taken in terms of i'm not like I don't feel like it's stretched far enough from House of the uh, from Game of Thrones for me to be like absolutely super invested in what happens with these characters. So for me, if you're going to lean into character building, but at the same time you're known for just killing off characters, there's like an inherent conflict there. And on the, on the other hand, uh, the the downside for uh, Rings of Power is that they're not great at building the characters individually, but they're doing a great job of building the world. And that's where I'm like, okay, like that's giving me enough to keep me invested throughout and 
I personally don't mind being thrown around and like feeling like I'm in this like adventure at the end of the day. And that's what it feels like. It feels corny. It feels like I'm on an adventure. There isn't much weight behind it, like you said, because it feels yeah. like the decisions are already made. And these characters have like these fake conflicts where they like act like they're not going to do what they need to be doing. Yeah. But ultimately, we know you're going to do what you need to do because it's like a fantasy adventure. And so I guess I'm just okay on this front with letting go of the silliness, knowing that this kind of has that fantastical adventure aspect to it, similar to like a, a Stranger Things or something where you go, oh, this is like a piece that's meant to have that kind of teen fiction style right, of right. of like fake conflict. Like it's never going to get too serious, even though it takes like deep routes. It At the end of the day, the, the, the number one thing is entertainment. And I feel that here versus a... House of the Dragon, where I go, no, it's like, it's not meant to be like feel good. It's meant to be like very dramatic, but right. it's not necessarily like 100% my cup of tea. So I think it's really interesting to see how it comes down to personal preference. It is, yeah. And it's interesting that we're getting, um, I'm happy we're getting the shows together like at mm -hmm. once because I think it's, you understand yourself better. And I, I think you enunciated a lot of points correctly there. Like for me, entertainment with TV doesn't necessarily always come from like vicariously watching like from a third person perspective which i think what is what the rings of power does which is like mm -hmm. you're an audience member in this show something like a house of the dragon attempts to at least put you in that space that's why it's focusing maybe on those minutia moments and and, and conversations and dialogue a little bit more and i think the characters for me is is the ultimate letdown, not necessarily just for this episode, but just the show in general, man. Like Galadriel is not like doing it for me. I I, I it's oh, yeah. not. I don't know. It's the writing. It's the acting. This actress just refuses to like enunciate. I, I've never seen an actress just like keep her mouth like it's so never moves her mouth. all the time. Yeah. It's un like I'm losing my shit here because it's funny. <laughs> you see Hellbrand like. He's yelling, great. whatnot. He's great. Yeah. yeah. And Galadriel is just, just always like this. I'm never going to open my mouth. And you're like, please, just please open your mouth just <laughs> for a little bit. <laughs> so it's like you, you, it, she's not the only protagonist. And I think that's the saving yeah. grace is that you have the Elrond Durin relationship. You have the um, Nori and the stranger. Like you have these other relationships mm -hmm. that you can like lean on. But she's like one of the protagonists and will likely be one of the protagonists until the end of the show. And I'm not jiving with her. So to, 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 to like she's a cornerstone and that's not super working for me. And, uh, you know, some of the other characters, again, it's I guess the way they're written, like is sealed or I'm not I should feel some sort of connection with him because he's supposed to be like a regular Joe type of guy following his own you know spirit and whatnot. Mm -hmm. And it's just not necessarily working for me. It's. I don't, again, I don't know if it's because of this focus on we're going to do the adventure stuff and we're going to go on that. And again, like, I, I don't think this is too far removed from what the original Lord of the Rings trilogy did. Like, I didn't right. leave that trilogy going, wow, yeah, these character arcs and character uh, expositions <laughs> just, wow, they're going to live with me forever. Like, it's just, that's right. just not what it was. So it's in a similar spirit. I think that's something we talked about when we even watched the first two episodes of the show. It was like, yeah, I think this is going to be more of Let's do things as opposed to super deep character, uh, mm -hmm. you know, examinations. Um, and that's where just preferences come in. And, and that's where I think yeah. it, it is a purely preference thing where if I can't, it's, it's hard to feel like compelled to watch a TV show for me personally, if it's just about th things happening, mm -hmm. um, the, the other TV show, I think the thing that comes to mind, so uh, this season I watched, uh, this year I watched, um, what was that Apple TV show? Severance, right? Mm. Severance no spoiler, is a no tiny TV show on scale. Yeah, yeah. No spoilers. It's a tiny TV show on scale, but it's like super compact. Like it's a yeah. super compact show. And so I appreciate that we're like moving around in this tiny little like world that we built, whereas mm. this show is quite literally the exact opposite of that. So it's getting exposure to that type of TV for me um it's also just understanding what your preferences are and so i can appreciate the show for allowing me to do that and and it's nice to have the dichotomy of mm -hmm. the two shows and Absolutely. to be able to at least like have conversations with you like this where you're able to enunciate oh, okay i see why i feel the way i feel 
so you can better understand it instead of what it's become online, which is like a complete <laughs> mosh pit of just just oh, shitting dude. on things. But you're also getting like the two of the most ridiculous fan bases. Like for these shows, it's like not just that these shows are coming out at the same time every week, but yeah. they're also two of the biggest like IPs yeah. in existence, yeah. like happening at the same time. It would be the equivalent of like if like Harry Potter decided to drop a show right now too. Like like that's when you would have the trifecta of all the worst yeah. fan bases just dueling it out. Basically, it's a lot. It's a lot. This yeah, show, like all... you think with even this show and people who love adventure, you wouldn't be getting comments like oh like armor isn't as like spot on as it should be like one star out of five it's like like come on man yeah and then you have the same thing with the house of the dragon i would i would want to ask you then like based on what you just said yeah would you feel that do you feel that the elrond and durin storyline is probably your favorite because i'd imagine that one yes is leaning 100%. into the character building the most i'm i really enjoying it personally because yeah. of how like well-rounded the characters are but then the actors are both great at it too yes they're great and i think they uh they're the characters are great the actors are great the, the characters are a little bit they're similar enough but also have enough opposition in the way they see the world and, and the way they communicate mm -hmm. where you can create moments of of like comedic relief even in tense situations i mean that shit with the table was hilarious dog <laughs> and Dude, like, keeps doing this yo it's back at but, it man. <laughs> That's some funny shit. Like that's some yeah. genuinely funny shit. And it's not a surprise <laughs> that it comes out of like that relationship. And it's also one of the few moments of tension in the episode that, that, that I felt true tension was like that yeah. dinner scene where him and yeah. the king are like having a moment. And it's like they're they're kind of jousting mm -hmm. with each other. Um, and Elrond has to break it up. And so you, those yeah, th that relationship. I'm way more in tune with as opposed to something like a, G a Galadriel and, and Hellbrand, who's, by the way, convinced to go into war super quickly. Like, not only is he convinced <laughs> to go into war, but Numenor also, like, yes and no, yes and no in the space of two episodes. Literally. All right, all right, I guess. But you got to love the reveal, though. He dropped the sack, and the camera stayed on the sack, and then he grabbed it, snatched it back up. Yeah, and, grab and your sack, it. man. <laughs> <laughs> no, I, it's spot on. I agree with you. Like, I think even, <laughs> especially last episode, Elrond and Durin uh, were just like really like it was this whole back and yeah. forth tension throughout the whole episode. Even speaking with, um, I already forgot his wife's name, but like when Disa. Elrond is speaking yeah. with Disa and mm -hmm. speaking with others, like and then when um, Durin is speaking with his own father, like there are so many intricate dynamics that are relatable to us that make right. you feel super invested. It feels like a whole different set of writers are writing that storyline versus some of the others weirdly enough right and i think with galadriel yeah. honestly i i was like really honing in on this episode i think she gets given a lot of really good lines like she had this one fire line this episode i i, I really i'm sad that i don't remember it but it was an amazing line and i was like i feel nothing because she's yeah. like and i realized yo am i actually feeling like she's been written poorly this whole time only because she's not nailing like any emotion in any of this and and there's a time and place for a super stoic protagonist right like you have well elrond like, is that too he but he's like i would say he's actually very animated like he's like he's so there's a like a, so w when we talked with fahad about this like there's this notion that elves should be like super stoic like super gentle like they, they, they right. kind of like float like where right. other people like like exist but I think Elrond does such a great job of that where he like he has that like sense of lightness to him but at the same time is really making you feel like there's potentially like he could potentially backstab his friend or he can be really funny and charismatic in this moment or in this next moment he could be really emotional and sad and you don't know really what he's feeling but with Galadriel it's always like dark and broody no matter what like no matter what happens no matter what's been yeah. said she had the chance to be lighthearted in that battle with all the with, with the people in the street and she was still just like it's literally this face yeah yeah or she, how are you gonna kill an orc how are you gonna kill like bro chill out <laughs> just for like a minute man. bro i'm on break <laughs> Come on. oh my god man it's just the mission the mission the mission yeah. the mission you're all right but i felt like that was right. written like if honestly yeah. if you just took that on paper you would read it as because uh, like the actors are able to interpret it to whatever degree they want and again it's on the director to really make sure that the vision is still put forth on the screen yeah. but 
I could, I, somebody else could read those words on paper. Like, that's not how you kill an orc. That's not how you do this, whatever. As like playfulness, like, as like, oh, like you're not going to beat an orc fighting like that kind of thing. Or like, you're not going to like, you, you know, like this, this is your best chance. Like also, even in that fight scene, she had so many cool lines about not using strength, like using agility, using like what, like all these lessons being taught. And I'm so stuck in the fact that like, she just so boring like oh my ah, god she, and and then on top of that yeah, physicality of it she doesn't move her lips she doesn't she doesn't change that like brooding stare that she has and I, i'm not trying to hate on this one actress so much i don't know what the cause is behind all this but she's just way too one-dimensional as a character and i feel the same way about aaron Deere, by the way like he's the exact same way but just not the like are we talked about this since episode one <laughs> just get, and these are two people that are supposed to be like big characters in the show well what, what yeah. are we doing here yeah know. you gotta you gotta like do something man like you gotta introduce them and i think that's where like the difference th that fantastical levity to the show mm -hmm. that's what i think they bl that's like their safety blanket around these characters where like i remember watching galadriel in, in like the original and obviously she's only in that for, for whatever 15 minutes in basically <laughs> the whole trilogy and she's like that too like she's that thing but then my question is why would you build a show around a character mm -hmm. like that like the, the the book that the show is based on, as far as my mm -hmm. I understand it, is like a chapter of an entire book that's meant to be read as like a reference resource type of thing. So it's not like you had to necessarily tell this exact story. Right, right. You chose to. So but why build it around this particular character and then why create her in such a way where she comes off as yeah, incredibly broody, very removed from like everyone. Mm -hmm. And I guess that'll be her arc is like coming from like here to like being with others and being around them and such. But whether it's a slow transition or whether it's an ineffective one, I don't know yet. It's still, I guess, early yeah. days in the show, but it is an incredible turnoff because the whole Numenor stuff, you should like, it's beautiful. It's, you know, the so captain nice. story is interesting. Mm -hmm. The whole idea, like the king being with the elves and then reverting as a people. Like, there's stuff Captain there. Levi. Yeah, right? Yeah. But she's the one anchoring it, and I just don't care. Mm -hmm. And so, <laughs> unfortunately, yeah. like, I'm just trying to watch Elrond and Durin just talk <laughs> shit. Because that's what you sort of, you feel like. They, I need, think a, they need a podcast, man. There. I, I listen to an Elrond and Durin podcast. <laughs> It's so good. I yeah. love them. I love their dichotomy. Yeah. And I think they try to do that with Hellbrand and Galadriel, but it doesn't have, like, I don't know. It's like supposed to be sexual, but not sexual. Like, it's supposed to be tension there. And then it's mm -hmm. not, like, I don't, it's just unclear. It's a little bit unclear. Also, so, the, the scene who, where they were both like, sorry, just to even add. Yeah, yeah go ahead. Yeah. There, the scene where um, Galadriel and Hellbrand are talking about, like, why there's darkness inside them. And they were, like, right. crying. Like that, oh, was, I could tell that was supposed to be like such a, like a, a emotional, powerful scene. And I was just like, what the fuck? I don't care. <laughs> like, it's just so bad. Bro, there was a couple of those. Yeah, there's a couple. There's one line, one of the worst lines in the, yeah, it's actually terrible that I remember this. It's when, uh, what's his name? Uh, Salim, Salimbrar is talking to Elrond uh, and he goes, Calabrimbo. Uh, Calabrimbor. I'm not even close. Dudes are going to roast my ass. <laughs> Calabrimbor. When he's talking to Elrond and he goes, your mother tried to tell your father to like, why do you have to be the one? And then the line right after is because I am the one who can't like, <laughs> is that it? That was supposed <laughs> to be like the bomb. Like what? <laughs> Cause there's a pause in the moment and you're like, Oh, so they're trying to like highlight that line right now. And it just did not, it just did not work. Yeah. There's too many of those moments. There's a little bit too many of those moments in the you show. You spend this much money on these shows, like, why can't you just <laughs> hire like really good writers? Like, like, I don't know. Oh man, I don't know. The writing has been a bit of a letdown, I will say. And I went into it knowing it's going to be a cheese fest. Like yeah. you're prepared for it, and it's still some of it is just. Ugh. But uh, anyway, what are we excited for for episode six? Yes. Uh, let's let's do this quickly here. What are we excited for? I'm excited, hopefully, to finally find out who the mystery man is with the okay. Harfoots. Yep. And I'm yep. also Gandalf. excited to see the <laughs> Gandalf, yeah. And I'm also ex it's, it's Wandolf. It's just uh, <laughs> uh, like uh, just a uh, bizarre version. No, no, the, I'm also really excited to see the the Numenor folk actually fly. I mean, not fly. Wow sail out of Numenor for once like because they like all <laughs> fly out yeah <laughs> there's a private jet just like head over to Southlands yeah fuck it yeah. um no the like 
because the Numenor people are like very much bound by the idea of Numenor. They're like fight for Numenor, yes. do this for Numenor, whatever. Like I want to yes. see what they're like outside of their out of their element. Like these people have been on an island, really just entrenched in their own beliefs for this whole time. Really excited to see how they integrate with everybody else. And then finally, I'm I'm also really excited to find out what ends up happening with the humans who have kind of like sworn fealty to Adar and the orcs and like what the ultimate plan is from the, the few that stayed behind. Oh, one yes. last shout out I'll, I'll give is because I really hated this character up until this episode is Theo's character and his decision to stay behind okay. and stay with Arendir. I think he's he's been like a really annoying character for the first uh, four episodes and kind of just did bad shit to do bad shit. But it was like beyond what a teenager does. It was just you just like evil for yeah. no reason. And then I think in this yeah. episode, you kind of get a little bit of his rationale about like really wanting to um like fight no matter what and he ultimately makes the right decision is it a little bit cheap that he just randomly like does a 180 and makes the right decision probably and gives him the kinda, sword yeah and just gives him the the, the sheath for the sword and then he's like i, I was like somewhere. yeah <laughs> <laughs> yeah Smidge there's a lot of in this show there's a lot of uh I've seen that symbol somewhere and it's like yeah. right next door <laughs> no one ever makes like the the connection there's that, and then there's a lot of. I feel like there's a lot of. They're about to reveal something, and then they cut away. They're like they're about yeah, to yeah, find yeah, something, yeah. and then they cut away. And it, I don't like. I don't. I don't like being drawn to a story by purely like because we left on a cliffhanger. That's why you come back. Like I don't. I don't want to. I'm not huge on that idea. But no, the thing I'm looking forward to. I guess whether it's episode six or in the future is I actually want to see what the battle looks like at the tower. Mm. Whether it. I, I mean, I'm hoping it culminates to an actual battle and it's not some foo-foo, we made it out of here, a dungeon, you know, tunnel. We don't have trick to fight. Them. <laughs> yeah, trick Yeah, because now we're building it up. Like, oh, these, yeah. these huge line of orcs are coming and the holy shit, you decided to defend it. What do you do now? Um, so I hope we get like an actual battle sequence because that's one of the things that the series is known for. So right. it'll be interesting to see how it plays out in, in the show and how far, you know, the scale of it, how how clever the show is with that stuff. Like I'll be really looking out for that. Cause we've been, we've been a bit on a tear in terms of like, we watched Bahu Bali. We watched those battle sequences. We watched, of course, the Lord of the Rings battle sequences. And now I have the game of the Thrones stuff in my head as well. And we're going into this. So there's mm -hmm. a, in recent time, at least, you know, with, with the stuff that we've talked about and reviewed, there's been quite a few really good battles. So I'm, I want to see where this sort of sits and I'm not necessarily just looking for it to com to compare it, you know, be its own thing, but also, stand out a little bit because that is again you want to do world building and not characters battles and shit like that that's yes, important yeah. that's yeah, really yeah. important when we get to those moments so they they hopefully nail especially that. when you've thrown 58 mil per episode or something like i better be seeing some fire battles dude <laughs> bro outrageous outrageous cost i think 450 for the whole season or some shit uh it's outrageous <laughs> bro it's outrageous man that's <laughs> two end games that's so much <laughs> Holy half shit. a billy so much man um but yeah we'll be back we'll be back uh next week for episode six uh we'll be doing the house of the dragon of course on on sunday it'll be uh fahad and myself i think so we'll that that's coming up um yeah until next time osama appreciate you of course hanging out chatting here uh, i know you got a haircut to get to but you're already looking fine as hell i don't even know uh, well, what, what, thank you man why thank you but no this this sheep shaggy hair needs to go it's got to go <laughs> Absolutely, yeah. So uh, take care, everyone, of course, uh, and and, uh, and peace. See you.